I'm Scott Alamo, it's the 11th of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we're going to be answering the question of, given that it seems that we have the resources to live more or less wherever we want, what is making us choose to stay in Nicaragua? We got asked this on the channel, so we're going to get to that right after the bump. Before we dive into today's question, I get asked an awful lot how people can t contact me. I tend to put contact information at the end of the show, but there's a few things I do on every episode, and I just want to say at the beginning, if you go to my page for my show, or if you go to the description of the channel, or if you watch the video to the end, in all cases, there's an email address available that you can reach out to me. So there's always a way to contact me by email. Also, within the first 90 seconds of every episode, I put a uh, my Ziff Traveler Instagram information, so that is also there as well. There is lots of contact information on every video, and no matter how you get to the video, look around. There's information there on both how to sponsor the show through Buy Me A Coffee and how to contact me through email or Instagram. So there's always a way. It's always there. Just go look because you can't post in response. If someone asks me, how do I contact you? I cannot respond with that information. YouTube does not allow that. So that's why it's in those locations. And it's, I mean, it's available on every video. So I'll, I'll maybe find a way to put it on when I start, but that's there. But I get asked that a lot and I'm always confused. Like, did, if you watch the video, I make a point. I mention it, I put it on the screen every time at the beginning and the end and in, yeah. Okay. So today's question was why are we why are we fixated on Nicaragua when we have the resources to potentially live anywhere and uh you know, the first part of that is it appears that we have the financial resources to choose somewhere else. That's, I think we can prove that in that I lived in uh, New York, I lived in Texas, uh, we then lived in Panama uh, on the coast. We actually lived on the ocean in a high rise in Panama. Uh, we lived on the interior of Nicaragua in the past. We lived in southern Spain, southern Italy. Uh, we lived on the in the islands of, of Greece. We lived in central Romania and northern Ukraine. Uh, and, and now we live in coastal Nicaragua, uh, more or less coastal. We're pretty pretty close to the water, not on the beach at the moment. So we've lived in a lot of these places and that proves that yes, those places are all options along with many others. Uh, basically um, anywhere in Europe, of course, you know, if I wanted to get a large house in downtown London, that would be a completely different financial picture. Uh, but essentially all of the major countries of Europe, all of Latin America, basically all of Asia, all of Africa are all within the affordability envelope. Uh, that we have uh, not only available to us, but have uh, used in the past. So um, we try not to live in, in super high cost locations. Uh, New York City's, I mean, I have in the past, but I was actively working on Wall Street at that time. And it made sense. Once I was not actively working on Wall Street, uh, we wanted to live in places that uh, just made more sense. We didn't want to live in that location. I just had to for work. So we've lived all around. And um, I think, uh, so, so that's the first part of the question. Yes, it is correct. Um, and, and I think that... And I never, I never mentioned this. I, never, I don't really think about it that much. Um, one of the things that's important about us being in Nicaragua, one of the reasons that this channel is a bit different, is that um, so many people come to Nicaragua. Certainly not all, not by by any stretch, right? But there's a very large group of people who look at Nicaragua because they believe it's their only option, or it's the best of a very small number of options because they're stuck on a budget that is so tight. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But I think a lot of people who are looking at Nicaragua that way, and I have friends here who are of this opinion, right? That they're, they're choosing Nicaragua because um, they wanna be, all the reasons that we chose Nicaragua, right? Like, like if you see my video, why we chose Nicaragua or the seven reasons why, uh, we've got a couple videos that really dig into why we chose Nicaragua, but. Um, of course, it's cost effective. That was a reason. Um, safety, it's proximity to the U.S. When you look through those things, um, and, and of course it speaks Spanish, right? So if, if you speak Spanish or you speak a Romance language, or even if you just speak English, it's Spanish is pretty easy to deal with compared to, for example, moving to some other wonderful country like Cambodia. Their language is going to be very challenging for most Americans or most, most Canadians, uh, and, and their time zone could be very difficult. So even though the country may be wonderful and, and it may be safe and it may be, you know, available and, and welcoming and whatever, there may be some really simple factor like, well, I want to be able to fly home really quickly and cheaply. 
that simply rule it out and Nicaragua was able to do that. So there, so we have these factors. But one of the things that a, an awful lot of people are choosing Nicaragua for is that it is the, because it is the most affordable, by some degree, country in the region, and someone has pointed out, right, that Colombia gives it a good run for its money, or for your money in this particular case, and that is absolutely true. Colombia is fantastically affordable uh, and, and falls into the same category, but it's, it's quite a bit farther away from North America. If you're coming from North America and have any ties to North America, um, the flights and, and travel time and the option to go by ground uh, from Nicaragua are completely different than they are from South America. And so uh, if you have absolutely no ties to anywhere, you never need to set foot in North America again, you're never going to Europe again, then Colombia becomes very viable uh, for the same reasons that Nicaragua is. But if you have any of those ties, and, and the majority of us do, um, it may not be common, right? Maybe it's once a year, like us, or once every five years, like a lot of people I know, uh, but they have some amount of needing to go back to the US. And if you're on a tight budget, or just being frugal, and you need to spend a few thousand dollars to get home versus 150 or $200 to get home, home being back to family or, or business or whatever, then um, that can be a major impact to your budget, especially if you have to do it both directions, especially if you have to do it more often, uh, whatever, right? It adds up or if people need to come to you, whatever. So, so that could be a factor. Um, but so because of these things, there's a tendency to find that Nicaragua uh, attracts a lot of people who are coming here because they're uh, budgetarily strapped. They feel trapped, and, and maybe they actually are, uh, and they need a place where they're able to live on a lower budget than may be possible or reasonable for uh, Guatemala or Mexico, uh, Panama, Costa Rica, certainly Costa Rica. Um, and so because of that, uh, they're, they're viewing Nicaragua through a lens of not having chosen it per se, not having desired it, uh, but having uh, found it acceptable within a, a very small set of options that they're able to afford. And this creates a view that it is a, um, uh, it's a fallback country. Well, I wanted to be in Mexico, but I couldn't afford it, so I'm in Nicaragua. Yeah, it's fine, but it's not my first choice. For us, it's important to understand and this is one of the reasons why I think this channel is really important. This is our first choice. We can afford Spain and Italy and, and Panama and uh, if we had to, even Costa Rica, right? <laughs> it's, that would be discouraging. All the others, I don't consider the money a big factor. Costa Rica is actually discouraging from how expensive it is. Uh, Mexico, like all those, like perfectly acceptable. We may not even notice the financial differences, honestly. Uh, they're not that different. Nicaragua is probably the cost leader within those but it's not significantly a cost leader to a point where uh, we're feeling it in our monthly budgets compared to Guatemala or Honduras or El Salvador or Mexico. Maybe we'd feel it compared to Panama, but it'd still be well within our budget. Uh, and, and lots of Europe is, is quite available. And, and in many cases, Europe is about the same price, right? Uh, we lived in both Greece and Romania, and in those locations, we didn't find that the prices were so dramatically different that they would cause us to make decisions based on the budget. We would make decisions based on the time zone, the food, the culture, the weather, you name it, but not because of the budget. So we're not choosing Nicaragua because we can't afford other things. We're choosing it because when we put all the factors together, this is what we feel is the number one choice for our family. And not just now, but for the long haul, right? We're not, uh, we're not here just uh, to raise kids. We're not here just to get through a particular period of our lives. We're here investing very heavily. And by investing, I don't mean business-wise, right? That, that would be fine, but that's, that's not what I mean. Um, I mean investing as far as our lives, meaning we are buying our homes. We're building our dream host, uh, house here, our dream home here. We are you know, we brought our pets here. We're raising our children here. Uh, we, we are putting more and more into being a part of the community, a community we plan to be a part of for forever. Uh, and so this is um, us investing in, our, in a personal way. Our personal investment of our time and our emotions and our lifespan is being put in here because we believe in this country in vis-a-vis in -vis us. Right. This is the country that fits our lifestyle. It fits our culture. It fits our values um, and, and provides the safety and the cost of living for certain. Like the fact that it's affordable is important in being able to make that commitment and say, you know, if we went to a France, 
right? Well, it would cost a little bit more today, but what if the prices went up dramatically in the future? Well, it may become unaffordable in theory uh, or less affordable. It may impact us from an affordability standpoint. We can't do the things that we would hoped to do. And here in Nicaragua, of course, things can change dramatically, but we don't look at the long-term finances as being something that we have to be concerned about. It's a big advantage knowing we have the safety long-term that by investing our lives here, that our ability to weather financial storms or global economic collapse or whatever in the future is, is best suited because we're in the best reasonable position for that. Maybe we're not in the number one position worldwide, but we're very close to the top of the market. We're in a, in a place where we are most protected um, and, and we're within the margin of error in determining between different places. Can't easily pick another location and say, well, this one would be definitely safer than Nicaragua. We're not, we're not in a position where we would know, but we could look at something like a uh, Brazil or a Canada and say, we're really confident that Nicaragua is safer than those countries from a long-term protection against runaway inflation or wild economic collapse or massive increases in prices due to a huge influx of economic activity. The other part of this question is why are we fixated on Nicaragua? And I think this is uh, important to mention because it's easy to view this channel as uh, as a travel or relocation channel, and, and it kind of is now, so that's legitimate, but this was started as my personal vlog, and uh, we, very importantly, live in Nicaragua. So uh, when I'm talking about my daily life, which we do a lot less now than we used to, um, obviously that life is mostly taking place in Nicaragua because this is my home and I, I don't leave that often because there's an awful lot to do here and we're very busy. We have a, a regular business that we've had for a quarter of a century and that keeps me extremely busy. Uh, and, and so I have to work my normal job. And we have businesses here in Nicaragua that are, are not, as I often point out, are not for profit purposes. They're for other reasons. Uh, we like having businesses here. So, but those take a lot of time. And so we're very busy and we have children. So it's not easy to just jump in a car and go. And we have dogs. And so they need to be taken care of. It's just, we have a full life here, right? We're not, we're not retirees uh, who are, are looking to do world traveling at this point. We love to travel. We love to move around. Uh, and we did, so this is an important background. We, we spent a, a number of years, a large number of years, uh, basically, not completely continuously, but almost continuously from 2011 through uh, the start of COVID, uh, we were just moving around the world and, and really researching and really trying to decide where our long-term home was going to be. And we had a lot of places that were thinking maybe that answer. So I totally get why people are looking at it from, from that perspective. And I think that there's a lot of value there. Uh, and that's why we lived in Europe. That's why we lived in Latin America. That's why we kept moving and doing lots of research and why I have a lot of, I think, useful input for you guys because I put a lot of work into this, uh, most of a decade, pouring specifically onto this. Like, where are we going to go? And in the end, it was uh, right at the beginning of COVID. We were starting to talk about move to, moving to Nicaragua pre-COVID, but we didn't make it in time. We got locked out of the country. I'd been here in 2019 uh, to try, uh, not for that sole purpose, but that really was the uh, kind of the kickoff to us deciding that this was where we were going to move back to, right? Because we had lived here in 2015. And uh, so, so from a show perspective, we did, unfortunately, before I, I had a vlog, uh, I have little bits of, of episodes, little bits of, of video I've taken in all these places, but I wasn't doing this, this vlog and I wasn't doing it in this kind of context. I didn't have the cameras for this. Um, when we moved around all these different places in Nicaragua previously uh, and did all this like finding out about ourselves, finding out about these regions, getting a feel for what we liked and didn't like, then all of them we love. Right, there's reasons why we love all those places and, and reasons that, that Greece really sticks in my mind and Romania really sticks in my mind and, and Spain and, and Panama. All, you know, I love all the places that we went. And we did a bunch of research. So we weren't going into places blindly. We weren't going to places we didn't think we would like. We thought we would like it. We thought we knew where we wanted to be and that we were trying them out. And that we then came back to Nicaragua. You're now getting, I really started doing this vlog in serious, like in a really serious way in the weeks before we came down. I, I decided I was gonna do the vlog when I came down pre-COVID for uh, that 2019 trip. And I started like a couple days before that. 
right? So everything in this vlog was tied to Nicaragua from the very beginning. And then that we made the decision we were coming here and then COVID hit, just it, it, it kind of, things kind of just it happened automatically or organically. Uh, and so now we're here in Nicaragua. And so you see this show very much from a, uh, seeing us in a moving to, discovering and sharing as we discover Nicaragua with you. Uh, and I think that um, the show has a lot of importance and a lot of value because you're getting someone who has, has been through that research, someone who made this decision, uh, someone who um, is in the process of investing, in the process of building a life, in the process of discovering things, but has been lots of places, can give you a comparison. Um, uh, there's just a lot of things that I, that I think make me and this channel make sense for certain people. And, uh, and that makes it seem like we're fixated on Nic Nicaragua because it is the place that we chose and it is where we're based. So you're gonna see the show from here all the time. What does that mean? What does that mean? So uh, other episodes on the show we have done when we've been to Costa Rica, we have filmed that. Now my wife was just in Asia. She doesn't film things. She does not do the show. So she was in Asia. She did four countries, uh, visited all kinds of things and it would have been amazing footage, but she was, you know, without me there. And so she didn't get to record that. And um, I went to uh, Guatemala last year and I filmed that, very popular episodes. I can't wait to go back and do more places. I really wanna to go to Mexico in the, in the near future. I really wanna get back to Guatemala. I'm, I'm working on plans to get to spend time in El Salvador, which is very close, right? But, but expanding stuff in the region. Because it's not just that I love living abroad. It's not that I just like moving. I also love travel. And uh, this show, I really want to um, take in a direction. I mean, obviously, it's my vlog. This is a lot of my personal life. But uh, it's also, um, I think it has this real value in this kind of traveling and living abroad and digital nomadery and investing abroad and retiring and like all these different things that kind of make sense. And I have kind of an input on those things. And that input's going to be better the more places I go and the more I can show you like, okay, so we've done time in Nicaragua. We've got lots of this. Let's get to El Salvador and talk about how that's different, where it may, might make sense for you, where it might be better, where it might be worse, what the, what the differences are, all those things. Absolutely, I want to do that. Because we just moved to Nicaragua, and I, two and a half years ago, right, almost three years ago, um, but it's, it's a new country and we're settling in. And I mean, I'm making a new episode every day with new content here. Um, it's not like we're short on content and it's not like we're short on being busy. And every day we wake up and it's like, we're still in Nicaragua. Like there's still, it's still kind of amazing. And in some ways it just feels like home. Like this is where we live and we're settled in and we don't think about it that much. But in other ways, there's still a lot of, wow, we live in Nicaragua, but we've, we've lived abroad um, continuously since 2015. We started really seriously like on it in 2012. So that we're not in our home country is not too surprising that we're here in Nicaragua and that we have made a life here that we are really settled in is kind of still pretty surprising. Uh, but certainly I, I have plans to do a, a, a massive amount of travel that I think it's gonna be crazy interesting and fun for the show. Uh, we're not sure yet, we're, we're waiting on uh, the person that I'm doing that with to make some weather decisions because we want to avoid the monsoons because we're gonna be driving. Uh, and I'm very excited about the project. It should be cool. I'm working on getting up to El Salvador because I think there's a lot that we can do in El Salvador that's gonna be pretty exciting. Um, and we're starting to get to a point, this is important, um, where things are settling down enough here that there's the potential for me to get out and travel to other places. Uh, well, not for huge amounts of time, but to go and, and gather, for example, Honduras has a lot to offer and it's very easy for me to get there. Costa Rica has a lot to offer. It's very easy for me to get there. Panama is not too hard to get to and so forth. It's certainly, you know, flying off to Australia would be very difficult, right? So within reason, but I think the value of this show is not traveling the entire world and showing you every possible thing. There's people who do that and they're excellent. Um, but I think uh, exploring very heavily Latin America and to a lesser ex extent, um, Europe, especially less traveled Europe and potentially a bit of Africa. And of course, just travels wherever we go. Uh, I, I think is where the show is and, and bringing this like kind of relocation, this digital nomad, this uh, ability to free yourself and go explore the world mentality and attitude and tools and understanding is really important. And, and I think the show is kind of fun and relaxing. Um, people say, you know, I'm pretty chill and that's part of the fun of the whole thing. Like I'm kind of doing pretty adventurous stuff in a really relaxed way. <laughs> um, and that's kind of who I am, right? Um, and right now my car's broken down. I really wanted to get out and do some walking. 
So I'm stuck with no car, and this question came in, so I really wanted to address it, because uh, because it is a good question, and I think probably a lot of people are asking, okay, so on one hand, it seems like you don't have to be in Nicaragua. Why are you in Nicaragua? And the simple answer is because we love it, we chose it intentionally, and not because of the price. The price actually, for all intents and purposes, was a background item. And the reason it was background is because all the places that were seriously in the running, um, and, and I'll give you those, those, right? The places in Europe we were, we were most considering, Spain, Italy, Greece, and Romania, all of which I've lived in. Um, there's a few that we have not lived in that, that rank pretty high, Bosnia, Kosovo. Um, th they would be good choices. Croatia is okay, Slovenia is okay, France is okay. Uh, we really like the Mediterranean, we really like the weather, we like, uh, but for linguistically, uh, obviously France would be okay, but linguistically, like Bosnia and, and Kosovo are very difficult. And so those are not really things we wanted to do. Uh, same with Ukraine, right? It also, then the war got really heavy, so that didn't help either. But it was not really on our radar because of the language. And you can see my, my episodes that go into like why language drove a lot of our decisions. Um, but Europe really, didn't win out because of the time zones and, and our, our continuing work stuff uh, back in the United States. So Latin America was really our main target, and we really needed to be north of Colombia. Uh, so Panama and North, or Panama and West, depending on how you look at the map, uh, were really important for us as the key region uh, that made geographic sense for what we were looking for. We would consider outside of that. So Colombia on the radar, Ecuador on the radar. Um, of course, safety, we do have kids, Ecuador, is at the very, very end of the list, right? Because it's very dangerous right now. Uh, Peru is on the edge of possibility, but glad we weren't there. We didn't know at the time, but things have happened. Bolivia and South are too far. They're simply too far to reasonably be able to work with our families and, and jobs and everything. Uh, we, can't, we can't travel around without it being too expensive, too uh, cumbersome. And so those really, we, you know, Argentina could be fantastic, Chile could be fantastic, Uruguay would be really high. I've always wanted to live in Uruguay, but from a practical standpoint, they, they, don't, they don't meet our needs. Even though they're affordable, uh, they're safe, they're, they're interesting, they're neat. I'd love to visit them. I would love to go you know, find out more and take you guys with me and do lots of filming. And the more that you guys, I'm gonna mention this, the more you guys support the show, the more we get viewers, you know, share this and, and buy me a coffee. And the more that you watch and like and interact and get the show going and get, that stuff helps make this happen, right? That's, so for me to be able to do those things, I'm gonna do it some, but the bigger this show gets, the more I'm gonna to shift to doing this stuff full time. The more I'm gonna have cameras to do it, the more I'm gonna be able to afford to do it long term, the more I'm gonna be able to afford the hotels and the flights and all that. So just something to keep in mind, that's one of the reasons why you wanna go out and promote the show, because we're gonna come up with really cool stuff. But um, those places really, I, I, we couldn't really look at them for a living. So it was Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala and Mexico were our, our really serious contenders once we decided that the time zone of Europe didn't make sense. Basically, because there were things close enough to the United States that were so good uh, in relation to the European options, we had to rule out the European ones for us at this stage. Uh, and, and Belize is not in our area of interest, right? It's not, not particularly safe. It doesn't have a lot of the things that we want and it doesn't speak a different language, it's, it's English. So that was not on our radar. But all these others were. We had a pretty good selection of options and we chose Nicaragua from them. And of those, the only one where money would make any significant amount of factor in the decision is Costa Rica. And Costa Rica was not at the top of our list for other reasons, but the money, because Costa Rica is so expensive, so unapproachable, um, and so full of expats, right? We did not want to be moving to an enclave in the United States. So Costa Rica lost out both on the enclave front and on the, uh, the cost front, but all the others fall into a very affordable, and even Panama as the most expensive of the remaining countries, is cheap enough that we were not concerned financially of it versus any of the others. It's a little bit more expensive for sure. All of the others fall into the who's going to really notice, depending on where you live. Of course, you want to live in a high rise in the middle of Mexico City. That's going to cost a lot more than living in the country in Nicaragua. But if you live equally in the country in Mexico, it's going to be in a very similar cost perspective. Sure, Nicaragua is probably the cheapest, probably the most accessible, probably the easiest to deal with, but none of those things are so dramatic that it made Nicaragua the only choice or ruled out any of the other countries. We very carefully looked at 
everything that we knew, all the places we had been, um, and, and where we had lived, where we had visited, and Nicaragua won out. Not only because we had a lot of experience here, but because it just met all of our needs in the best possible way. It was the best mix of things for us. And it might be for you and it may not be for you. And I would love to get out and spend lots of time in all of these countries and help bring those decision factors to you guys and help show you what the difference is or just like what life would be like in Honduras, in El Salvador, in Guatemala, in Panama, I want, and Chile, in Mexico. Like I wanna really explore more broadly and bring you much more of the region. That's where I wanna be. So this is not a show that's fixated on Nicaragua. It feels that way because for the last two years we have been newly moved here and we're very busy with that process and it is what it is it's just the nature of this is where we are now living and where our lives are taking hold and we've had to move several times and, and lots of things are going on here we keep ourselves very busy and very connected and very active and so there's so much of Nicaragua to bring you that that just keeps coming and it's going to continue to come and we're not leaving Nicaragua and that's a, this is a huge part of our lives but we are going to be expanding we are going to be going other places we are going to be showing you more and more from this region and others and comparing and doing all that stuff so it's I hope that it doesn't feel too much like we're fixated on Nicaragua just because that is what is going on during the time that this vlog has gotten up and running we're going to cover a lot more stuff and especially i visit guatemala some of my most popular episodes are in the very little time that i was in guatemala it's, it's incredibly clear that that content gets more viewers um, per hour of filming than the content in nicaragua uh, just because there's more people searching on it right people are not searching on nicaragua people who find this channel are like oh nicaragua wow i didn't uh, that wasn't on my radar but you have to find this channel first and then watch it a bit and then go oh nicaragua should be on my radar if nicaragua is already on your radar by the time you find this channel it might already be a, a gone decision right you're already whatever so it's important um that we that we get out and go other places because that brings in new audience and then people can discover nicaragua and be like oh this was cool in guatemala it's cool in honduras what about ooh, nicaragua is really interesting too right it's it's important from that perspective as well i'm not doing the show just in nicaragua because it has some show benefits it certainly does not uh so so that is i hope that explains a bit of where we are i hope it, it understanding you know um and some context and uh certainly get down those comments ask away on these questions leave your own comments what you think um if you uh, you know need me to expand on something here or whatever um i think that uh i think that you know nicaragua is a really good choice and i really want to convey this is not the place that you i mean some of you are going to have to pick it because it's the only thing you can afford i understand someone is going to be trapped that way but we shouldn't be looking at it that way. And those who are who are not trapped shouldn't be looking at it and saying, all these people who are in Nicaragua are there because they're trapped. That is absolutely not the case. Very few of the people, I mean, I know several, right? But very few of the people that are friends here, that, that we know that are expats here, are here because they're financially trapped or they're, they're in such a position that they, they really feel it's necessary. Uh, almost all of us have the financial resources to go anywhere in the region if that's what we wanted to do. And, and we're choosing Nicaragua, not just us, but lots of people we know are choosing Nicaragua because it's safe, because the food's great, because the people are wonderful, because the weather is warm, because, because just all these things that make Nicaragua such a wonderful place to live, not because it's cheap. That's a bonus. Just, it's just extra, right? Uh, thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel. Like I said, buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller, and help us get out and explore other places and return to Nicaragua and show how wonderful it is to come back after going to great places from here. And I really am hoping to get to El Salvador incredibly soon, like maybe within the next month. Uh, I want to do some filming up there. It's uh, the, the part of the region that I've done the least, and I think it's the most interesting of what I haven't done yet, right? So I really want to get up there and see a number of things, uh, specifically San Salvador and the northern Pacific coast. That's what I'm really interested in, uh, most at least. And uh, if you're looking for information on Nicaragua, hit us up, info at relocatenicaragua.com. Be happy to answer questions. And as always, like I said, get down those comments, ask away, leave your comments, say hi, let us know where you're, where you're watching from, how you found us, all that kind of stuff, and uh, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show, put a link on your Facebook, whatever it takes. Help us expand our audience and go more places and do more interesting things. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all tomorrow.